Welcome back, Defenders. Jake here. Here it is. Ukraine hits oil refinery in Russia's Tatarstan with long-range drones. For anyone concerned that a certain country was pressuring Ukraine to stop these attacks inside of Russia, no. As long as Ukraine is using their own domestically produced drone fleet, and they think it's to their advantage, then these attacks will continue. Russia can't stop them. Nobody is pressuring Ukraine to stop them. There is a video online, I'll link it down below, but this is what a smoldering tower looks like that used to be a productive oil refinery. This strike was done in Nizhnekamsk, Russia, and this was a Tanako facility. On top of that, same day, Ukraine also used drones to strike a Russian drone factory in Tatarstan. And this is 1,200 kilometers away from Ukrainian territory. Media in Russia were shocked, and those in Ukraine pleasantly surprised by Ukraine's drone attack on a region more than 1,200 kilometers away. Here's where this attack occurred on the map, pretty deep inside of Russia. Russia's air defenses, <laughs> they probably don't even have any here, why would you? But just the sheer scale and how spread out these oil refineries are, every night Ukraine has about 30 good targets to hit once again, and they're going to continue cycling through all of these refineries, all of these refineries until they're offline. Same with that Russian drone factory, it's not safe either. There is a video showing the moment of impact when the drone hits the Russian drone factory. This is where they produce Shahid drones that attack Ukraine. I'll link this video down below. Putin's oil industry is in trouble. The Russians don't have a response. They can't stop this. They don't know what to do. And they're starting to panic. So what the Russians are doing is just destroying the city of Kharkiv. This is according to Kharkiv's mayor. Russia has destroyed almost all of Kharkiv's energy infrastructure. So the city of Kharkiv is getting at the worst right now. You can see from the military map, the Russians were just outside the city prior to the Kharkiv counteroffensive in September of 2022. So it's fantastic that the Russians had to retreat back to their own country. But the shelling has never stopped. Russia has never stopped attacking the city of Kharkiv for two continuous years. Kharkiv has probably gotten it the worst. And Kharkiv, pre-war population, was 1.4 million people. This is Ukraine's second largest city. To put this devastation into perspective, the city of Kharkiv, for my American audience, is about the same size as the city of San Antonio, Texas. It's bigger than Dallas, Texas. The expression here in America is, everything in Texas is bigger. Well, not the city of Kharkiv. Kharkiv was bigger than Dallas. For my European audience, the city of Brussels, Belgium is about 1.2 million. So it's hard to grasp the devastation and destruction that the people of Kharkiv have experienced these last two years. And here's where we are. I think there were six thermoelectric power plants in the city of Kharkiv, and they've all been destroyed. Russia's been trying to destroy them for two years because military aid from the United States has been blocked for six months. All of these power plants are now offline. The cost to rebuild them, it's estimated at over 10 billion US dollars, and it's going to take years. Here's a quote from the mayor of Kharkiv. Unfortunately, there is not enough voltage. We had to end the heating season early to save money. The introduction of schedules of light outages are now hourly. We can't keep the street lights on for the city. So I'm outraged. This is the legacy of MAGA Republicans. This was the goal. 
This is not a bug. This is a feature. This was the objective of MAGA Republicans blocking military aid, blocking additional air defense missiles and air defense systems. Allow the Russians to destroy all of Ukraine's energy infrastructure, all of their electric plants, their hydroelectric power dams. It's really hard to film these videos, guys, um, as an American, just being how ashamed I am uh, of my fellow Americans. Putin begins active preparation for confrontation with Europe, the United States, and NATO. Now that Putin's been reelected, he's dictator for life, he's now putting things in motion. And here on the channel, when I say we're looking at decades of war for the Russians to get their empire back, that's not my opinion. This is what the Russians are saying. It's important to listen to them. Here's another clip from Russian Media Monitor. Vladimir Solvyov says, Russia is destined to fight the West for decades to come. So let me read for you this clip. I'll link the whole thing down below. Here's what Solvyov has to say. And now let's talk about the West. For them, we are obviously the main enemy. Decades of confrontation are lying ahead of us, and we should absolutely not be afraid of it. Several decades of conventional peace were just a coincidence. He's talking about Russia not being at war with their neighbors for the 90s and 2000s. But centuries of hostility were natural because it's impossible to make peace between good and evil. We are good and they are evil. It's simple and clear. You want Moscow's strategic defeat? For that, you're ready to take the riskiest steps? We are not surprised. That's that. That's that. Do you want to destroy millions of innocent people? Force is the only language they understand. Let's not anticipate that they will surrender. Let me remind you that Germans in Berlin didn't surrender. We were fighting them until the end. Decades of war. Millions dead. If we don't support Ukraine now. The Russians admit this on TV. Here are the facts. Russia is not winning this war. I'm going to prove it to you in a second, showing you maps of the battlefield. But what Russia is winning at is global propaganda. Their disinformation campaigns they run on social media here in the West. Here's one example. Russian disinformation on Ukraine has grown in scale and skill, warns Berlin. 50,000 fake accounts on Twitter, each posting 200,000 times a day, try to convince Germans that the government's help for Ukraine is undermining German prosperity and risking nuclear war. Russian bots are equally active on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram, YouTube. There's this illusion that more people support Russia in the world than actually do. So here are the numbers. I'm going to prove it to you. This is from the Twitter account Tender. He says, I finally had some time to summarize the front movements over the last six months. So since MAGA Republicans started blocking military aid from the United States, how successful has the Russian military been? And in the last six months, they've gained 250 square kilometers. Not 250,000 square kilometers, 250 square kilometers. To put this in perspective, Ukraine's failed summer counteroffensive, Ukraine took 297 square kilometers. Here are the maps, the before and afters. You can get out a ruler and measure it yourself. This includes capturing the mid-sized town with a pre-war population of 35,000, the city of Avdivka. Every time Russia captures a village, they pretend like it's the Battle of Stalingrad, but this is pathetic. The second most powerful military in the world. 
attacking a country one-third their size, when the United States is no longer helping them, and they couldn't even take more territory in the last six months than the Ukrainians took last summer. So I'm going to go through a bunch of bad news. This is the good news for Ukraine, that the Russians are so stupid and incompetent, and their military is just trash. Russian tank attack crushed near Avdivka. Top-end T-90s and obsolete T-62s burned by drones. The Russian army stopped getting quick successes with big armored assaults back in February, but the, the Kremlin still tries them from time to time. Ukrainian defensive drills are fairly well practiced. This was the largest armored assault through an open field. Yes, in the first months of the war, there were bigger tank columns going down roads trying to get to Kiev. But as far as open fields, the last year and a half, this was Russia's largest armored assault ever. 36 tanks, 12 BMPs. And they got annihilated. Where did this occur? We can zoom in to Avdivka. I've shown you guys this map a couple times. The Ukrainians have already prepared new defenses on the other side of these uh, water, water obstacles. So the Russians thought this would be easy to get through these open fields. My guess is they wanted to push on this road either up in this direction towards this village or down this direction towards this village. But it's a turkey shoot. It's the same thing over and over. I'll link these videos down below if you want to see a Russian armored column get completely annihilated. There's multiple videos. How does Ukraine repel these? Mines, drones, artillery, javelins. And here's a video that I saw this morning. Uh, this is a Russian soldier committing suicide on the battlefield with a knife. When this happens, usually a Russian soldier's legs have been blown out. They have no hope of being rescued by their comrades, no hope of receiving proper medical treatment. They're given instructions by their leadership how to commit suicide on the battlefield. Normally they do it uh, with their assault rifles or they place a grenade under their chin. This is what they're taught to do. My guess is this Russian soldier didn't have his gun or a grenade, so he used his knife. I'm sure this video is going to be taken down by Elon Musk. He usually takes these videos down. There is a link to the Telegram page where it was originally posted. I'll put these both down below if you want to see the glorious Russian military in action. What else is going wrong for Russia? Huge fire breaks out at Russia's Euromarsh machine factory. There's a video online. This factory is involved in the Russian defense industry. Was this a drone attack? Was this sabotage? Was this incompetence? Just another day in Russia. Just another fire. There's also another fire in Moscow at a electrozolite plant. Cause of the fire unknown. Russian aircraft accidentally dropped two more bombs on Russia's Belgorod Oblast. Every single week, there's reports of Russian pilots accidentally bombing their own forces, their own cities, or Russians shooting down their own planes with friendly fire. Migrant roundup after Krakus city attack leads to collapse of garbage collection in Dagestan's capital. Following the detention of migrant workers in an anti-terrorist crackdown, employees from the mayor's office were forced to collect garbage from the streets. Because there's all these reprisals against migrant workers from the Central Asian republics being arrested or deported, there was nobody to pick up the trash. And So this picture in a nutshell sums up modern Russia. Iran warned Russia about a major terrorist operation ahead of the Moscow shooting. The United States went public with their intelligence a month prior to the attack. But Iran knew about it. And Iran warned Russia. So either 
Russia's incompetent and they did nothing, or the FSB wanted the attack to happen. But this is interesting. Russia is looking to remove the Taliban from the terrorist organization list. The Taliban are now good friends and good allies of the Russians. And this actually might be a good explanation for the ISIS attack in Moscow. ISIS and the Taliban don't like each other. They're fighting over resources and territory in Afghanistan. And if the Russians are looking to partner with and collaborate with the Taliban, that could explain ISIS's attack in Moscow. I honestly think more terrorist attacks are going to occur in the near future. So let's talk about U.S. politics, obligatory apology in advance. Tomorrow, this Wednesday, will mark the eight-month anniversary of President Biden asking Congress to pass additional military aid for Ukraine. For eight months, House Republicans have been blocking military aid. Funding officially ran out on October 1st. That's when another aid package should have been passed. So now MAGA Speaker Mike Johnson is saying he's going to allow a vote on Ukraine aid once the House gets back from Easter vacation. The problem is he's not going to touch the Senate's version of the bill. $60 billion in aid, more or less what the United States has been doing since the beginning of the invasion. But Speaker Johnson is promising he's got innovations uh, in a House version of military support for Ukraine. Jay and Keeve has a list of terrible things that Speaker Johnson could put in this bill to weaken it or sabotage it for Ukraine. And more or less, the people writing this Ukraine aid bill, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates, Lauren Boebert, people who support Russia. It's stupid. It's comical. It's a trap. What Mike Johnson wants to do is pass a House version of a bill that he thinks will die in the Senate, that won't get 60 votes. And even if it goes to the Senate, the Senate's going to change something, and then it's got to go back to the House. So Mike Johnson is playing this game. He's going to send the House into recess again for two weeks on, I on April 22nd. Every two months, he's just going to send the House into recess to avoid passing anything and wasting more time. And I can't explain this. For my non-American audience, America's paralyzed. Russian disinformation and propaganda has corrupted one of our two major political parties. Donald Trump feeds this Russian propaganda to his supporters. So here's a clip of a typical Trump supporter and her opinion on Russia and Vladimir Putin. If Vladimir Putin were running against Joe Biden for president, who would you vote for? For our country? Um, that's a hard question. Uh, probably Putin. It is? Yeah, I don't think Putin's as bad as people want to. You would him. vote for Vladimir Putin? I would. Over Biden? Hell yeah. You would vote for Vladimir Putin for president of the United States? Putin wants to go back to good morality. He doesn't allow... I can find for you and show you dozens of clips of Trump supporters saying they would vote for Vladimir Putin to be president of America over Joe Biden. These people are nuts, and there's tens of millions of them, and they vote. So let's put this in perspective, because I know there's still some people who watch my channel planning to vote for Donald Trump. Havana Syndrome. Report links mystery illness to Russian intelligence units. Do you remember this story from 2017? Russian GRU unit linked to mysterious attacks on U.S. officials abroad. So the Havana Syndrome first came to public attention in 2017 when Trump was president, and 20 U.S. officials posted at the embassy in Cuba 
suffered strange medical ailments. We now have the intelligence. We now have the report. It's laid out in the 60-minute uh, interview. But it was the Russians. Of course it was the Russians, using microwave technology or whatever, to uh, hit our embassies in China and Cuba with these ultrasonic attacks to cause disorientation, nausea, dizziness. This is some kind of next level attack that goes through walls to harm our diplomats and service members serving abroad. So here's a, a clip from the 60 Minutes interview. I recommend you go watch it on YouTube. This should be the number one story in America, but I don't think it's getting enough attention. Now I am going to speed it up to 1.25 to get around copyright restrictions, but I want you to watch this clip. Hey guys, despite my best efforts, 60 Minutes blocked the clip on copyright grounds. I did everything I could to scramble it, but they're not going to let me show it. They're not going to let me show the next clip either. So I'm going to have to link the 26 minute video down below, and if you want to watch it, you have to go to 60 Minutes page. So the Russians have been attacking our diplomats. They did it to a defense official at a summit in Lithuania. And we have MAGA senators. This is Ohio Republican Senator J.D. Vance attacking the report. Feels like a lot of journalists have lost their minds. Just for reporting U.S. intelligence. So let me give you a face to this story. This woman was working in an embassy when the Russians attacked it. And these are the kinds of uh, traumatic brain injuries that she's now suffered from. Mother is among the most severely injured people we have met. My headaches and brain fog continued. Later on into that weekend, I started having trouble walking down the stairs, specifically at night. I had trouble finding the steps to get down the stairs. So my coordination and vestibular system started just really falling apart. She was medically evacuated, and now doctors say she has holes in her inner ear canals, the vestibular system that creates the sense of balance. Two surgeries put metal plates in her skull. Another surgery is likely. It's devastating. It's absolutely devastating. We have Marines stationed in our embassies abroad. And Ohio Republican Senator J.D. Vance is a former Marine. This sack of shit won't even protect his own brothers. And instead, he'd rather shill for Vladimir Putin and the Russians. This is MAGA. We have to move on, guys. Zelensky commemorates the second anniversary of the liberation of the city of Bucha. I just want to remind people that when the Russians rolled into this city, this is uh, north of Kiev, when the city was liberated, 422 civilians had been found dead. Mass rapes, mass abductions, brutality, torture. 1,100 bodies were discovered in the region. This is what the city of Bucha looked like two years ago. If the Russians come to your town, this is what's going to happen to your town. I'm sharing this at the end of the video because this is the after picture. This is the exact same street in Bucha two years later. It's going to take decades, generations for Ukraine to heal from all this trauma. But the healing process can't even really start until the Russians are defeated today. So let's get to the good news for Ukraine. Japan has provided Ukraine with an additional $118 million in aid as part of a World Bank project. Not a lot of people know this, but Japan was the third largest financial aid donor to Ukraine in 2023, providing $3.7 billion in support for Ukraine. Thank you so much to the people of Japan. Greece is preparing to ship thousands of artillery rounds in a, from its military stockpile through the Czech uh, initiative. The ammunition is reportedly inactive, but still usable, and the deal is valued at 150 million euros. 
Thank you so much to the people of Greece. Spanish instructors have begun conducting training for the first time with Ukrainian personnel on the maintenance of NASM's air defense systems. Thank you so much to the people of Spain. Final clip I have for you, unfortunately, is not a good one. I feel compelled to share these stories. This is from Serena Zabriskie, U.S. journalist uh, based in Ukraine. She's currently in the city of Odessa. And this clip is of a Ukrainian school teacher, Svetlana, and she survived a Russian drone attack. But 12 of her neighbors, including five children, were killed in this drone attack in Odessa. She's going to give a tour of her destroyed home. Our kitchen, this is our living room, my bedroom, our kitchen, our corridor. This was our living room. This room was destroyed. And we ran from this corridor. This books from other floors. This is my bedroom. I forgot to close the window and this saved my life. This bedroom of my parents. They slept here that night. Yeah. This is also my room. Ми проснулися від зрива. Я вот спала в этой комнате. Ми побежали в коридор. Мы встретились в коридоре. Мама спрашивает, ты жива? Я говорю, жива. Нужно бежать. Все в пыли. Нечем дышать. И мы слышим, что дальше продолжает рушиться дом. Я успела вот сходить в рюкзак с документами. И мы уже выбежали в парадную. Наши двери вырвала в парадную. В этой квартире 26 лет. А сколько мне, столько родители еще дольше жили. Oh. Here is all my life. Oh my, oh my life. Please stop worrying the crane. Save lives, please. This is all you have left. Yes, please. 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 I would like to say in Ukraine, this is my country. Russia will be defeated. That's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth, keep defending democracy.